on TV32 is brought to you by these proud local sponsors. U.S. Cellular, Bell & Health, Simon's Specialty Cheese, Dandrud on West Mason, Gallagher's Pizza, North Star Dental, Witt Family Ford, Cobison Buses, Vakes Fox Valley Coin and Diamonds, and Security Loop Key Roofing. It's time for the TV32 Sports Showdown. You could not ask for a more perfect night for football. And look at those wheels. Are you kidding me? I can't believe what I'm saying. Playoff time has arrived tonight on TV32 Sports Showdown. We've got a Division 5 Level 1 matchup as the Wrightstown Tigers, the number three seed, play host to the Sturgeon Bay Clippers, seeded number six. Alongside John Mino, I'm Brandon Kinnard, filling in for Ted Stefaniak tonight. John, we've got a real interesting contrast in styles in this one. Absolutely. You've got one team that averages over six yards per carry and over 2,500 yards rushing. The other team that is one of the top passing teams in the entire state of Wisconsin. Didn't you say that quarterback's as good as anybody there is? Danny Lodo, the Clippers quarterback, leads the state in passing yards. That's pretty good. All divisions. Yes, that's incredible. So this could be a good matchup, the contrast in style. And on Wrightstown's side, they don't throw it a ton, mostly right. a running team, but they will be with their backup quarterback tonight, Quay Thompson, the senior, replacing the star QB, Trevor Vandehei, who sprained his ankle Yeah, last week. a little bit of an ankle injury, but you know, I don't think a lot's going to change. They run the Wildcat with him quite a bit. They're going to keep it on the ground. I think they've completed like 25 passes or something for the year, so it'll be pounding the ground for Wrightstown. Wrightstown is hopeful to get Vandehei back should they advance. That ankle injury suffered in last week's loss to Luxembourg. Casco, the Spartans, claimed the Northeastern Conference with that one. Wrightstown settling for second place, but they're hopeful for a pretty deep playoff run this season. Yeah, no question. Well, you know what? At this division, when you've got size like they've got on that offensive line, I mean, just take a look at some of these guys. 6'4", 340. Once again, 6'4", 340, 6'2", 230, 6'3", 230, 6'3", 300, 5'10", 260, 6'3", 250. For Division 5, for Level 5, that is a huge offensive and defensive line because you know at this level, if you're that size, you're playing both sides of the ball. Absolutely, and, and I think that's one of the keys for Sturgeon Bay. They are undersized. Can they withstand that in the trenches tonight? And probably hit on a couple of big plays as well. With their passing attack, man, they are fast. They can get up and down the field. They might need a couple of big plays in this one to stay in it. Well, Danny Little, their quarterback, 6'1", 165-pound senior, 2,182 yards passing this year, 24 touchdowns, 56%. They've thrown 26 touchdown passes in nine games. Not many teams in the state of Wisconsin can claim a mark like that. 26 of their 28 touchdowns on the season yeah. through the air. You, right. you don't see that very often. This is the first meeting between these teams since 2014. So they introduced the Tigers right now. That was when the Olympian and Packerland uh -huh. were combined there for a few seasons. Now the Olympian is no more. Wrightstown in the Northeastern. Packerland still standing. Sturgeon Bay finishing third in that conference this year. Wrightstown won the last two meetings in 13 and 14. Obviously, we're going back a long time there. Right. These kids were in, what, fifth, sixth grade? I found it interesting, though. Sturgeon Bay's last win over Wrightstown was in 2012, level one of the playoffs like this one. Last time they went to the playoffs. Last time they won a playoff game. Yes, and Wrightstown is always in the playoffs. I mean, they just are one of those perennial playoff-type teams. They don't have many down years. But Sturgeon Bay, an amazing story of resurgence with their football pro program. They dropped down to eight-man football a few years ago and just made a concerted effort. Hey, we're Sturgeon Bay. We, we got enough people. Let's play 11-man football. And they did. And they really went to the youth and got kids out. And they got a good-sized team out there right now. And as you mentioned, one of the most successful quarterbacks in the entire state is going to be their quarterback tonight. Uh, his top receiver is Bryce Polzak. 56 catches, 819 yards. He's got another one, Patrick Hayes. 49 catches, 783 yards. Those are huge receiving numbers. And those years they were in eight-man on varsity, they were still playing 11-man on JV. So yes. That, that was these players. That's then, right. right? That, Good point. Freshmen and sophomores. And, and when we talked with Carl Waterstreet, their head coach, he was their JV coach as well, then took the varsity job when they moved back to 11-man last season. So it was kind of the right time for the transition. He says they've got a good eighth grade group coming in next year too so hopeful to stay in 11 man and stay competitive in 11 man and i know they are really excited to be playing football tonight to be in the playoffs they're extremely excited 
I mean, the coach, even just the notes he sent you guys, hey, this is great. Thanks for being interested in us. You know, we can't wait to get out there. So that's fun. That's what makes it fun, especially in these early first-round playoff matchups. And this, this weather, man, man, compared Perfect. to last week, oh too, gosh. when we were out here. I was here last week for that Wrightstown LC game. Pouring rain, windy, chilly. Man. Sounds like they did a great job of getting the field ready, right? They rolled it Wednesday, they said. Because you said it was a deluge out here. It was uh, It was a mutter, that's for sure. It was. There were tracks everywhere, water flying up on every slide, every step and it's in perfect condition for this one you got a lot of turf fields around the area now this is one of the ones sticking with grass and they did a great job getting it i ready. like it so right's time will receive caden colwell is deep along with eli lemke eli schuster the kicker for the clippers who are in their road whites here in Wrightstown, and the tigers in the home blues almost time for playoff football the division five level one matchup between Sturgeon Bay and Wrightstown, and we are off. Let's get it started. Bit of a pooch that will go out of bounds. Well, Wrightstown will get the ball at the 40-yard line. Good field position to start. They don't throw it a ton, folks. Expect to see a lot of ground game from the guys in blue tonight. Yeah, as I mentioned, Wrightstown is one of those teams. They've completed 21 passes for the entire season, but they've got 421 rushing attempts, 2,548 rushing yards, 29 touchdowns. That's amazing. Aiden Humphreys, 987 yards on the ground. Trevor Vanderhey, 674 on the ground. So they, they are well-rounded. And again, that offensive line is absolutely huge. And again, no Vandehyde tonight. He is out, the star quarterback yep. with the sprained left ankle. They're hopeful to get him back. Great baseball player. Too, Huge Vandehyde. baseball. Tremendous. One of the best baseball players in the state. This is Quaid Thompson under center. He'll hand to Humphreys on the first play, and he picks up about four. Mason Sackett. 5'11", 217-pound senior with the stop yeah, we'll for saying. Sturgeon Bay. We'll say his name yeah. a lot. Their leading tackler, great player in the middle for them. One of two sackets on the team. You know, it's one of those types of teams with Wrightstown, though. Uh, you could go back. You are talking about years and years ago. You could watch film of them back then. It won't be much different. They're just one of those kind of pros. They're coming out in the full house backfield. Here's Humphreys again along the right side, and he'll be stopped short of the marker, so a third and short right away for right Stout. Aiden Humphreys, nice size, 6'1", 190, just a junior. Yeah, it's so funny. You look around at other teams, and so many teams have moved to the shotgun, spread offense. Yeah. Even if you're running it, you're running it out of the shotgun or the pistol. It feels like you're transported back that's, to the 90s. That's what I mean. That's yeah. exactly what I mean. You can go back to any of those teams. Now Steve Clister, the head coach, been doing it a long time, and he hasn't had to change a whole lot over the years. Full house backfield again. Quarterback under center, which you very seldom see. Oh, it's lead block. Oh, oh, he bounces off oh, and then gets tripped up. That's Peyton Vandehei, who almost got it on the second effort, and now a big decision to make early in the game for Wrightstown. He'll be short. Caleb Polzak is the man that finally got him down. But act oh, right there, he took the big shot and bounced off that. That was Bryce Polzak with the initial hit. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Simon's Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoot. Fourth and one. And they'll keep the offense on the field with Thompson under center. First man through. Oh, that's be close. Boys, that could be close. Well, it looks like he got it based on the spot. And he did. First down, Tigers. So that's the way Wrightstown does it. Gambling a little bit, but for them, I think they're thinking to themselves, you know what, it's the playoffs. We're not going to punt fourth and one. Impressive by the uh, Sturgeon Bay defense so far. Very much. A little bit of a different look right now when that backfield of two halfbacks up front. They do go on. And they're the lead blockers. Yeah. And a big gain of about seven. Out of the pistol that time. And Humphreys again with his third carry of the night, picking up, like you said, about seven. But again, if I if you missed it when I mentioned it, uh, some of these linemen, unbelievable. 6'4", 340, 6'2", 230, 6'3", 230, 6'3", 250. Some of the linemen they've got on this football team for Wrightstown. It's the right tackle, Charlie Garvey, the biggest of the bunch at 6'4", 340. Uh, Liger procedure. Two guys jumped for the Tigers. Move that one back. You know, I, I, I talked to Ted about this. I remember when they moved the uh, regular season up until the middle of August. I didn't like it. I thought it was going to be too hot and too whatever and too short of a whatever. I love it now because now you're playing a playoff game right here in mid-October where the weather's still great. Perfect night, as we, as we discussed earlier. 
And last week was literally about as bad of conditions as any game I've ever done. It was That rough. was such a driving cold rain. I was here at this very field, just miserable. Miserable the whole time. Nice job picking his way through that time. Humphreys once again. Game about five. So pretty much gets the penalty back. Third, by third and about four. About four or five here for the Tigers. Inside Sturgeon Bay territory at the 48. Now, one thing the Tigers mentioned this week, too, when it comes to stopping Sturgeon Bay's passing attack, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. Don't give them the football. That's exactly. right. Ball Absolutely. Control, control the Chew up clock. as much time as possible. That's what we're seeing here early on. It's more than three minutes into this one. Back with the second man through, and he's going to be close. I think that was Landon Helfrey. It was. And it was. the first down. They call him the Toolbox, Johnny. Yes. And I'm very disappointed you didn't know who the original Toolbox was. It was a little before Extremely my time. Extremely It doesn't matter. You know, Civil War was before my time. I could tell you who won. I think okay. the Civil War is probably a little bit more historically I'm notable saying, than well, 1980s Packers players. Mm, don't say that to <laughs> Eddie the Toolbox West. Yeah, that's true. I'm I will never saying. forget that one now. I, I hope not. First man through again. Dragged down in the backfield again. Mason second. Coming in there, number four. Yeah, he'll be all around the football tonight. 64 tackles on the season. 15 for loss coming into the game. That one, not quite a loss. Picked up about a yard. 5'11", 270 pounds, 217 pound senior. But Wrightstown, once again, you're playing on the home field like this. It's, it's a little bit of a longer type of grass. It's a softer type of grass. It is more conducive to their style. We just grind it out, grind it out, grind it out. We'll give it to the motion man this time. Oh, he's got a shot. Aiden Kiddo, and here he goes. The speed on display from Kiddo, who's dragged down just shy of the 10-yard line. Our first explosive play of the night. And Wright's down is in the red zone. Craven Lauterbach with the tackle and saving the touchdown. Watch this. Comes around from that right side, takes the handoff. It's the first time we've seen them go outside like that. So first down now. At the 12. Single man in the backfield. Two receivers. Humphreys with a couple yards on first yeah, down. Driving hard. Tell you what, that Sturgeon Bay defense hits pretty good, though. They really do. That's not a bad-looking defense right there. Finn Stuth, number 69, 6'234 pounds senior with the stop at that time. You see it in the corner of your screen. Right down in the Gallagher's red zone. Every time a team reaches the opponent's 20-yard line, they are in the Gallagher's pizza red zone. Check out their locations in Swamico and De Pere, as well as two locations in Green Bay. Well, a little inside trap that time. That didn't gain much. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of bodies going in a lot of different directions. But a gain of only about, what, two? I'll bring up another third down. Right down does not kick field goals. Haven't yeah, I noticed that. On the season. Right. And Sturgeon Bay has only attempted one as well. So expect to see a lot of fourth down attempts in this one. Only third down right now. Third and they and can get a first down. Correct. At about the two. Full house backfield. Right half. Oh, he breaks the tackle. Wow. It took about three clippers that time to get Daniel Bunton down. Boy, just a sophomore, 5'11", 170 pounder. He packed a lot more punch than 170 pounds, didn't he? Breaking that tackle. Take another look at this one from Bunting. Right there. Sheds the tackle. Great job of breaking that tackle. Look at that one, two, three guys. Sackett comes in to finish him off. So it's fourth down from the four. They need two yards for the first down. Coming to the line in a hurry. Thompson hands to Humphreys. Humphreys. Touchdown. The Tigers strike first. Aiden Humphreys in the double digits. That's his 10th touchdown of the season. Well, that was a methodical 60-yard drive that used up over half of the first quarter. So what you were saying about the best defense against Sturgeon Bay? Best defense. Chew up as much offense. clock as you possibly can with the offense. Picture perfect. Two fourth down conversions on the drive, including this one. Yeah, he had a nice block that time. Number 10, Peyton Vanderhei, the lead blocker, did a nice job. Actually had two lead blockers, but Vanderhei got the clinching block to spring him for the touchdown. Now here's Daniel Bunton, who we saw on that third down carry, does the kicking for the Tigers. Extra point is up and through, so it's a 7-0 Wrightstown lead. We'll be right back with Sturgeon Bay's first possession. This is Sports Showdown on TV32. 
another reminder that tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Simon's Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoots. A 7-0 Tigers lead after the Aiden Humphreys touchdown. And this will be fun, John. We get our first look at this explosive Sturgeon Bay offense led by the state's leading passer, Danny Lodel. Yep, Danny Lodel, 6'1", 165. Like I said, he's a senior. Over 2,100 yards passing, 24 touchdowns in nine games, and 56% completion rate. Clippers on the return. That's Bryce Polzak past the 25, and out comes Lodel in the Clippers offense. Well, we'll see what they've got to offer. As I mentioned, Bryce Polzak, 56 catches, 819 yards on the season. Patrick Hayes, 49 catches, 783. Neither one big, both of them about 5'10", 165. The Wrightstown had an 11 play drive, all runs. We're gonna see a lot more throwing when the Clippers <laughs> Probably right the from the very beginning here, <laughs> yep. This is that contrast in styles we talked about off the top of the broadcast tonight. Lotto with Sackett to his right in the gun. Pump fake on the first play, looking deep, and he's got nothing. Yeah, he was looking for a hitch and go. He had his wide receiver over on the far left side, and he collided with the defensive back right when he made the hitch, when he made the, the quick stop, making it look like it was just going to be a down and out. He collided with the defensive back, couldn't get further down the field. Good job by Lotto to just throw it away. But they were going for a home run ball in that first play. I like that. I do too. Come in here, you're the underdog, why not take a shot? Yep. Also, also a good chance to maybe get your defense some rest. Yeah, that too. Long drive, although, you know, these kids play both ways. They too, certainly so do. Defense is still on the field. Two wide receivers right, two wide receivers left. Single man in the backfield with Lodel. And looks like a broken play. Local will get a cut. But didn't it look like a broken play to you? It did. And that's, that's atypical for Sturgeon Bay. Lodel's not really a running. No. Third and nine for the Clippers. Is he leaving the game? He's going oh, he's just going to get the play. Okay. I, I thought the same thing. Second, but <laughs> okay, he ran all the way over to the coach to get the play. This is old school football. That is, running all the way over there. Remember that? Before they did all the signals and everything? Yeah. No, you don't see that much anymore. The same thing. Lodel did, uh, he overcome a, it became a serious ankle injury to, to come back and play this year. We'll show you more about that coming up at halftime. But, it's your uh, feature story, correct? Yeah, about an eight-month recovery process. Wow. They weren't sure he'd play again, and here he is having the season of a lifetime. Third and long. Has his man. Nice pass on the money and twists his way to a first down. Caleb Polzak. Great job after the catch. Spinning and picking up the first. He's actually their leading rusher with 272 yards rushing. Just a nice slant pattern, nice timing pattern. It's always good for a quarterback like this to get that first one. It's like in basketball, I don't care if it's a free throw or a layup, you got to get that first one to get comfortable. A little bit of a low snap, looked left, I like that. He looked his looked away and found right the two defenders, found the seam. Same four wide set here in the gun for Lodel with Sackett with him in the backfield. It's about four minutes left in this first quarter now. Sturgeon Bay looking to answer. It's actually Polzak. It's a Wildcat, yeah. So the leading rusher, as you mentioned, Polzak keeps. and he Maybe made it back to the line of scrimmage. So something a little different that time, going with the Wildcat. Lodel coming back in as quarterback right now. I think he was split, Take another look at this. Yeah. split out wide there. Kind of like right. do with the quarterback exactly. and the Wildcat. And, yeah, just a, a different look on first and ten. So second and ten from the 41. Sackett Another with run. His first touch. <laughs> Sackett, big running back, 5'11, 217 pounds. Outstanding defensive player, outstanding blocker. He's one of those guys that can do a little bit of everything. Gain about four, second and six, or excuse me, third and six, right from the 45 yard line. Another look so he sees Sackett two running plays in a row here. What's wrong with that scouting report that you had there, Brandon? <laughs> hey, you got to throw a change up every once in a while. Did a nice know? job breaking that initial tackle. They will run it. They don't score a lot on the ground. I mean, Polzak's got 64 carries. Sackett came in with 30 carries, so they do run it occasionally. Throwing here on the rollout, pass complete. Another first down. 
And a good gain for Hayes with a couple fans calling for a horse call. Yeah, there. Patrick Hayes coming in with 49 catches, 783 yards on the season. 5'10", 165. He's a junior. And five games, five of the seven in which he's played, he's gone over 100 yards. Wow. Pretty good production. That certainly is. And he might have been one of those guys that was like playing 11-man when they were playing 8-man on the varsity, correct? Absolutely. Just a junior. Yep. Nice catch. Going down to pick that one up. Yeah, it was close to a little horse collar action. That's Humphreys on the tackle. Just had the jersey, it looked like. Maybe he didn't quite grab the pads. So two wide receivers flanked wide left, one tight on the right, two men in the backfield. Little hand to sack it, and another bruising pickup of four or five yards. That's a bruising hit. Aiden Humphreys, the featured running back for Wrightstown, goes nose to nose with... A man that plays basically the same two positions as he does. It's like mirrored images of yep. each guy. And both about the same size. So as the clock winds down to this first quarter, it might be two possessions total for the entire first quarter, the way these two teams play. Yeah, we had a feeling it might be kind of a quick game tonight with just the way Wrightstown plays, certainly. And Sergeant Bale throw it so that they might stop the clock occasionally. Widest wide receiver on the left hash. Too tight on the right, short side of the field. There's Lodel on second and six. Quick throw, complete to Hayes again. Short of the first down. He had the blocker in front of him. You know, years ago they would call that a pick when you have the first receiver go ahead of the other one and then, you know, make that block before he catches it. They let that go now. I don't know if they change the rules or they just let him play, but that's always a good pass for about five or six yards. See the first receiver right there? He makes the block. So third and two inside two minutes. No wind tonight, no rain tonight, no nothing except perfect weather for football. Don't even need a blanket. I don't know why you took a blanket. I got two jackets. I don't, I don't even need one up here. And a blanket. All right, third and two for the Clippers. In what is probably four down territory at this part. Not of the even a question there, buddy. The big man gets it, Polzak puts his again, head down, and he'll have the first down. It's so a very methodical drive going on right here for Sturgeon Bay. It's the second time we've seen Caleb Polzak take the snap there. Same Wildcat yep. type look. Boy, that sack, it's a strong runner, though, isn't he? Got those big thighs and really does a nice job pushing that pile. It's interesting. I got look him at that. 30 carries on the season. That's his third already. I know. Right? <laughs> it's a heavy dose, more than usual, of the big back. So first and 10 from the 29. Late in the first quarter. Lowell back at quarterback. Says his man in motion, far left side. Otto rolls right, and nothing downfield. He'll skip. Oh, bounds. takes a shot out of bounds. Goes down hard. Yeah, no flags. Well, I will. <laughs> you may have heard the Wrightstown crowd in front of us. They were yelling for a hold. I think there may have been a hold that got overlooked over here on the right side. Let's see here. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe. A little jersey grab. <laughs> jersey grab. But here's where he took a shot, right there. Wow. So second and nine. Moving down to the one-minute mark here in the first quarter. Tight formation. Nobody wide right now. Play action. Has a man wide open. Touchdown. Wow. Bryce, Bryce Polzak on the score all by himself. For the How touchdown. about that play action, Brandon? Wasn't that fantastic? You fooled me for a second. I thought, oh, Sackett's getting the ball again. Yeah. Lodel still had it. And, and like I run. said, it was a really tight formation. They didn't have anybody flanked out wide. Where does he come from? The right side? Right there. He oh, right there. The sneaks up. Left. Yep. Wow. Just a little corner post route, it looked like. And. Won't get one easier than that tonight. Somebody, a DB, must have been just peeking into the backfield and went with that fake. Eli Schuster, the kicker for Sturgeon Bay. Mmm, no. Off the left upright. So that could prove to be big as the game goes along. We'll see. But a nice response from the Sturgeon Bay offense. They're within a point here on Sports Showdown. Bellin Health Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics is proud to provide licensed athletic trainers for area schools and local athletes. Tonight, Roland Schmidt is working the sidelines for Wrightstown along with Dr. Ryan Burns. 
Thanks to all the Bellin team members who keep our kids safe and in the game. Bellin Health, the official health care partner of Sports Showdown. Take a look at some other scores tonight. Southern Door leads Tomahawk 13 to nothing. And the winner of this one will play the winner of that one. So that's one we'll keep an eye on. Kakana leads Brookfield East 14 to nothing. Bayport leads Riverside 16 to nothing. Kimberly leads Apton North 3 to nothing. That was a low-scoring battle last week when those teams yes, played 14-0 in the rain. The papermakers got the win. And with those two defenses, even with better weather tonight, I wouldn't be surprised to see another slobber knocker down there at Papermaker Stadium. A slobber knocker. That's a term you don't hear enough you anymore. Know, actually, Chad Michael Somebody Kim needs to bring Kimberly's that back. Coach said that in an interview with us okay. earlier this year. And okay. I thought, I'm bringing slobber knocker okay. back. Okay. You, you don't know who Eddie the Toolbox West was, but you're all over slobber knocker. I'm 32 years old. Well, okay, again. You can't use youth for all your life as an all excuse. Right, I will do my research on the 80s Packers. Thank tonight. you. Full house backfield once again. Thompson hands to the up man and the toolbox. Determined Humphrey. run that time. Landon Helfrey. Speaking of the toolbox. Yes. Now tell me about why they call him that. Just does all the little things right. Okay. Told, Whatever you need. On in big situations. He packs a punch and a small body too. Okay. Know? Was he 5'9"? In a slobber knocker type of game. 5'9", 190, plays both ways, middle linebacker, running back. By the way, it's nice to do a game where you can look the other guy eye to eye. i got to be honest I'm not with you. Sure Ted would not having 6'8", 10 in here. Yeah. He is a tall man. There he is again, the two blocks. First down game into Sturgeon Bay territory. Now, your alma mater is having a nice season. Luxembourg Cascos. So yeah. Number two seed in Division Four. Got a great future matchup with them if they win tonight. Another team from the Green Bay area wins. And they got little shoot tonight. Battle of the LCs. There you go. Edition. Gain of about three on the last play of the first quarter. It's a good first quarter. Seven to six, Wrightstown. We'll be right back with the first play of the second. And that's the end of the first quarter. Your score right Goodwill starts with you when you shop the original Halloween headquarters. Shop Goodwill for great deals on one-of-a-kind Halloween costumes, decor, and more. Perfect for any ghoulish gathering. Goodwill starts with you. That was first and ten, Wrightstown. Had a seven-yard gain from Aiden Humphreys on the first play of the second quarter. And now as we rejoin you, Quade Thompson under center, and he will hand off to Humphreys again. Yeah, He's third man three, had two lead blockers that time, and it showed. Nice gain of about 11. Hey, U.S. Cellular is giving away $20,000 for a distraction-free vacation. To enter and for official rules, go to 20kvacay.com. You see that web address there on your screen. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. That's U.S. Cellular. So once again, when you get two lead blockers like that, it might be old school, but it can be very, very functional. This is the third man through, and he gets pretty much piled up at the line of scrimmage. Peyton Vandehei with his second touch. 5'11", 185, senior. You know what? This Sturgeon Bay defense is better than advertised. Just thinking that. I've been impressed with the way mm -hmm. they've hung in there at the line of scrimmage tonight, considering as we talked about the size advantage that Wrightstown has. Right. But that was big Gavin Evers up there. He's 6'5", 220. I mean, they've got some fellas. Thompson hands to Humphreys again, and he picks up maybe five. Braden Evers, by the way, 6'7", 218 for Sturgeon Bay. So they got some big bodies out there. But you know everybody does these days, don't they? I mean, when, it's a little you know, different than you know, it used to be. <laughs> better weight training. Oh, my yeah. goodness gracious. Is that a different world than 25 years ago even? And the facilities are just amazing in some of those schools. Just incredible. Yeah, even here at Wrightstown, you walk into the school, you see the fitness center, the weight room. Yep. Great. Third and five. And he'll gain about three. Humphreys with another carry. He'll have a bunch tonight. So another fourth down coming up. Wrightstown, remember, had two fourth down conversions on their first touchdown drive. And now another fourth and short coming up after this carry from Humphreys. Again, you see now number 67, the big fell over there for Wrightstown. Charles Garvey, 6'4", 340 pounds. It's a big offensive lineman. Playing right guard. Fourth and one. He breaks it. Almost broke it all the way. Again, good hit near the backfield by Sturgeon Bay. That was Patrick Hayes. 
who, of course, goes both ways. But he broke that tackle and took it down to the 11-yard line. Take a look at it. This was a good hit right at the start. Watch this. Good contact right there, but just a strong runner. Keeps his pads low. Remember Coach McCarthy also talked about pad level? He had great pad level. one of his go-to phrases. Yes. That and what was the other one? Gobber slocker or whatever? <laughs> Slobber knocker. Slobber knocker. Yeah, that's what that was the other one he always used, right? The great official timeout. Or actually timeout, Sturgeon Bay. All right, we'll take one with them. Wrights down up 7-6 and threatening to score again here on Showdown. Well, every time a team reaches the opponent's 20-yard line, they are in the Gallagher's Pizza Red Zone. Check out their restaurants in Swamico and De Pere, as well as two locations in Green Bay on West Mason Street and on Webster Avenue. Gallagher's Pizza, Italian food, Irish spirits. Some other scores around the state. Kakana 14-7 over Brookfield Central. Now Bayport 23-0 lead. Kiwani leads Ocanto 20-0. And Southern Door leads Tomahawk 21-0. Second down and goal. Fumble. Lost the ball. Thompson able to recover it, but a big loss there is going to put him back with a third and goal on about the 13. Zach Roble came in to make that stop. Actually, they'll mark him at the 10-11, it looks like. Yeah, right about the 11. Did they just collide there a little bit with the fake? Oops, nope, just squirted out of his hands. That looked like last week in the rain. Yeah, it did. Actually, I give those teams a lot of credit last week for as few turnovers as there were in that kind of weather. Gave him a pretty good spot there. Looks like he went down at the 12-13, but they've got him marked at the 10 here on third and goal. So third and goal from the 10. Thompson Looking to pass, to has a man. Touchdown. Well, how about that? Your first pass of the game goes for your first touchdown pass of the season. Gavin Ducott on the score. His second catch of the season, both touchdowns. Well, I don't think he was in the scouting plans. <laughs> Six 170-pound senior tight end, and boy, did he get wide open. Let's see how it happened. He's coming from the left side of the line, and yeah, the safety's looking for a run. He blows right by him, wide open. Yeah, he also had Aiden Humphreys wide open in the flat if he'd wanted him, but he went for the deeper man and the score. Another nice drive by Wrightstown, very impressive. And that extra point sills deep into the night, doesn't it? Wow. 14 to six, Wrightstown leads now. We'll be right back on Showdown. From our lot to your driveway, our tools help find you a new vehicle quickly and easily. That's Whit Ford, your trusted Ford dealer. So Wrightstown, as advertised so far, really strong running game, but then pulling out some stops. They're using that running game to set up the pass, and again, the tight end just absolutely wide open. That's the advantage when you've run it so well. I mean, you saw it on the replay. The safeties for Sturgeon Bay never even really looked at him. No. He leaked out there. They had their eyes focused on the backfield. Well, that's what you got to do, though. You know, I mean, team's got a lot of tape to look at these days. You got to do something a little different. So it might go out of, oh, it dies on about the three-yard line. Pick it up. This is Cordell Anderson on the return. That was an outstanding kick. That was an absolutely outstanding kick that time. No question about that. Daniel Button, 5'11", 170-pound sophomore. Great leg. He's got a good leg. And sophomore, we've seen him carry the ball. You figure he's a guy who's probably going to be a pretty big part of their offense and defense as well in the coming years. Yeah, absolutely. So deep in their own territory now, Sturgeon Bay at their own 14. Two wide receivers coming far left, one far right. Let's see what Danny Lodel and the Sturgeon Bay offense can do on their second drive of the night. Through a touchdown to Bryce Polzak on drive number one. Here he hands off. That's Caleb Polsack around the right side. Pretty good gain on first down. Yeah, not a bad gain at all. Gain of about five, yeah, maybe four, second and six. You know, Sturgeon Bay, one of those teams, that you, you, you talk about how many yards they threw for this year. I mean, just incredible with that type of thing. But we have to realize, when you, we talked about what they were doing eight-man football a couple of years ago, and <laughs> it's an entirely different football game, but they really throw a lot in eight-man football. So maybe that helped develop some of these guys watching that style of play. Yeah, they'll throw the ball all over the field in eight man. There's a lot of open space. Absolutely. Six fewer players on the field. Right. So running with this kind of an offense, I'm not sure that really hurt them that much. A lot more ground than we probably expected. Absolutely. No question about it. 
Gain of about three. Should bring up third and about two and a half. On the 21-yard line. He's out looking at his left hand there, it looks like. Yeah, I see that. So third down and about two. 7.42 left to play here. Second quarter in a fast-moving football game. And I would say this definitely is not four-down territory. Let's see if Lodo looks for one of his tight ends this time. Takes the nope. pistol snap, handoff to Polzak again, and hey, another four-yard pickup, good for the first down. This running game is looking outstanding for Sturgeon Bay, the last thing in the world we thought we'd see tonight, but that's what they're doing. And it's been really effective, moving the chains. Hats off to their line on both sides. Absolutely, no question about it. Yep. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing out here. Take another look at it here. Watch the push the offensive line gets up front here. Open up a nice hole for Polzak. Boy puts his head down, gains a couple more yards for the first down, up to the 26. Now it's Sackett in the backfield after three carries from Polzak. Lodo will look to throw. Oh, uh oh. That's Quade Thompson, the quarterback. Goes through the touchdown pass. Now he gets the pick. And Wright's down with a great chance to take a two score lead. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a touchdown saving tackle because there was absolutely nothing in front of him except the end zone. Just right to him. I don't know if he was expecting the receiver maybe to cut in a little bit. I, I would think that's what he was waiting for, but the DB just sat right down and made the catch. How about that? Gets the interception. Now he's right back under center. Under Absolutely. Center. Again, full house backfield. Big hole, nice run, number 10, one more time, Peyton Van De Hay. Gain of nine. That was a big moment in the game. You just get Huge, that, that was the biggest moment of the game. Because Sturgeon Bay, even though they were deep in their own territory, they were moving the ball on the ground, picked up those two first downs, got out of the shadow of their own end zone. Second and one. Humphreys the carry. Big hole over the right side, dragged down by Mason Sackett, but not before he has a first down and a lot more down to the 10 yard line. That's just what they do. That's, those, those, those you're exactly five, correct. Six, eight, 10 yard carries, they will wear you out. Nothing fancy whatsoever, but again, you get two lead blockers. You get the first lead blocker taking that outside linebacker or defensive end, pushing him on the outside, getting a seal. It's a first and goal. Vanda High with space on the edge. And the third Does not want to go down. down. That was a powerful run by a 185 pounder. That's right down just kind of pinning back right now and just grinding. Third and bay by Pulzak. So second down and three. Just tough runners, aren't they though? Absolutely. I mean just take the contact, keep your feet moving, grind it. Takedown coming over there by Dominic Robinson. Let's see what they do here. Take him down. Remember the play action touchdown pass last time in a goal to go. This time it's on the ground and Humphreys has his second score of the night. Another outstanding hole by the big offensive line for Wrightstown. So the interception leads to six. And as we mentioned, that was the biggest play of the first half. Another One more time. Aiden. Humphreys. Again, he's got the two lead blockers who do a nice job. You talk about the pad level. You saw him there. He yeah, never, absolutely. Never got up at nope. all. Still kept those pads down. Going for two. Try to even it out. Go up 16. Humphreys again. And he's got it. Boy, Humphreys has been a workhorse. Wow. Aiden Humphreys, 6'1", 190. Just a junior. Came in with 987 yards rushing and so he's obviously over 1,000 yards for the season right now. It's a 22-6 Tigers lead. Can Sturgeon Bay respond? We'll find out after this. Down at Distance is brought to you by Gandrud West Mason Value Center. Find the right vehicle at the right value for your money. Complete inventory online at gandrudwest.com. Some other scores here. Casco leading Little Shoot, well, 10 to nothing. Say that again. Luxembourg Casco, All right. excuse me. All right. Luxembourg Casco. I am from the Luxembourg portion. All right. So I got I to gotta make sure. I understand. Luxembourg Casco leading little shoot 10 to nothing. 
DePier leading Marshall 14 to 8. Kakana leading Brookfield Central 14 to 7. Bayport 23 to nothing lead. Polzak on the return and he is met by a whole host of Tigers just past the 20 yard line. That's a pure Milwaukee Marshall one. That's an eight seed against a one seed. And we thought that could happen. The, the computers were, yeah. you know, there, there's some question marks every year it seems. And, and Southern Door with a 21 to nothing lead over Tomahawk. Southern Door with a real nice season this year. Eight and one, their lone loss to a very good Kiwani team. They beat this Sturgeon Bay team 28-14 last week. Ran for over 400 yards in that wow. game. Southern that's Dorian. incredible. So, and the winner of that Southern Door game plays the winner of this game. Well, three wide receivers split out left. Trips, one right. Let's see if Lodl just starts letting it fly. Now swing it out to Polzak. And a good gain on first down following the blocker for a pickup of nine to ten. Maybe he's got the first down, actually. He did. They'll wave him forward. 11-yard pickup. That's kind of like that play they ran before, but this time they had the three wide receivers out there, so he had two lead blockers after he made the catch. All you got to do is complete that quick little pass there and follow your blockers. Right there, he's got number 10 doing a nice job. Pushes his man back, Patrick Hayes. It's an important drive for Sturgeon Bay. Really important they drive for Sturgeon the Bay. Ball to start the third quarter, too. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Very important drive. It's their workhorse. Ooh. Gets taken down, Landon Helfries. Yeah, Helfries with a nice low tackle there. How do you take down a guy with those big thighs like that? Take away his ankles. That's exactly what he did. You don't want to take him head on. Still a nice gain of about three. Second and six for Sturgeon Bay. I'll call it second and six. Ball at the 36. Okay, I'll call it second and seven. We'll just, you know. Agree to big, disagree. Oh, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. This is a very important drive for Sturgeon Bay right here. Trips wide to the left. A single receiver to the right for Lodel. Haven't seen him throw downfield a whole lot tonight. Really just the one touchdown pass. Threads nice the pass. needle there. Nice pass. Did he ever thread the defenders. needle? Wow, that was an outstanding pass that time. Right in the numbers. There's receiver Caleb Polzak. As they keep moving the chains now up to the 45-yard line. You're seeing it with Lodel on a few of these today. You're seeing why he led the state in passing yards. Very accurate. Year. Well, we're talking about uh, not going deep. The very first play of the game, he wanted to go deep. That's but true. But the receiver ran into the – exactly. Then, yep. yep. So, really, just two sh those two shots downfield, the yeah. one on the touchdown, the one on the opening play. A couple swings, a couple slants over the middle like that last one. So, two right, wide receivers left, two wide receivers right. Single man in the backfield is Humphreys. Anderson, the man in motion there. Look Little out! Wow! There he goes. Helfrey Whoa. with a big Whoa. hit and a sack. That was a blitz from way back. 5'9", 190, senior. What? I'll tell you what, Lodel barely got the snap in his hands. Look at him come right between guard and center and just take him down. Wow! That was a well-designed blitz that, right that there. Was, we, we said Lodel, that, they threw us off. That was Polzak again. You're Kimberly right. Polzak on the, uh, on the snap. Kimberly 10 to nothing over North now, out to North. DePier 21 to 8 over Marshall. All right, so that upset alert, upset alert down in Milwaukee continues. Lodel There's rolls a hole, right. yeah. Yep, flag flies in, so this will be a penalty on Sturgeon Bay, and they're going to be looking at second and very long. Very, very long. They're at second and 16 before that. Another new score coming in. Notre Dame leading Ashwaubenon on 21 to nothing. Holding. Offense. 10 yard lead official. Spot. Remain second down. John Doden with the call. So that's going to be what, second and 26? Yes, it will be. Well, Sturgeon Bay, you know, they had the interception, which led to a touchdown. This penalty was huge, taking it back to a second and 26. And I think they would be best to just kind of ride out this first half if they can, get one first down and go into the locker room, lick their wounds, and figure out what they have to do in the second half. Trips wide right, single man left. Lodal rolling right. Under pressure. He's going to fire it up for Oh, Anderson. he has a man. Cordell Anderson. Wow. Make it about third and three, a pickup of 22. What a nice job just dropping that one in there, running to the right, was under heavy pressure, 
and did a great job just staying in bounds and dropping that one right in the bucket. Under pressure. A nice blitz pickup. Very nice Sack blitz pickup. Well. That was Trent Vander. Hey, 6'2", 230 that was chasing him. He missed one on, on the last sack, but yeah. <laughs> made up for Everybody it. Everybody missed there. on that one. Yeah. So third and four. And now this might be four down. Tim. Absolutely, we'll no question. Inside, inside three. Tight formation. Sack it. Give it to sack. And he's got the first down, rumbling down that right side. Nice burst of speed I there. Yes, the sack it has been outstanding tonight. And again, they're running more than we've seen all year, according to their stats in this ball game. He runs hard, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, once he gets that corner, keeps those knees down. Nice tackle over there, though. I'll tell you what, these Peyton Vandehey, he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. All right, so that is a big first down pick Huge up from 20 and second, second and 26. 26. Sack it again, picks up Buddy Art. Mm, maybe, boy, he was piled up there. Whole host, Tiger defenders there. Clean number 72, Sam Keeler, 6'3", 230-pounder. It's a pride of lions, right? Not a pride of tigers. What What is the... I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't a, know. I'm not sure what it is for tigers. I, Should have uh, looked that up. I, I'm going to. All right, quick. there we go. By the way, the Kakana game now tied at 14. That is interesting. Yes. Brookfield Central coming up to Kakana. Lodal rolls right, dumps it off again. And here's Hayes, Patrick Hayes with first He's down. He's got a yards. first down. Wow. This is quite the drive here for Sturgeon Bay. Inside, two minutes to go, first half. Yeah, you love to see the response from the Clippers here after mm -hmm. that interception and the quick touchdown for Wrightstown. Sturgeon Bay storming down the field. And again, they will get the ball to start the second half. Ball on the 29. See the clock, 147 left to go in the first half. No punts in this first half. Right. <laughs> Four touchdowns and a turnover. Yeah, that's right. Three left, one right. Sack it behind Lodel in the pistol. Wouldn't be surprised to see that hitch and go again. Oh, Looking look deep. deep. There's nobody there, though. Oh, nice. oh, he finds the man on the sidelines. Kinda wow, once again, he finds Patrick Hayes. Kind of that same look we saw in the yeah. Anderson gain of 20 two earlier i was looking downfield and it was all blue shirts around the receiver so how he picked him up just kind of lonesome down the sidelines there was nothing open nothing open nothing open i thought he was going to run out of bounds and all of a sudden he appears right there yeah, he's just kind of leaked out there to the second level and was left wide open great job of finding that soft spot Lodal rolls left this time throws he's got his man cordell anderson to the pylon did he score Yes, yes he, did. he did. Wow, what a big play. Cordell Anderson, 5'7", 141. What a great job. What an impressive drive that was. Huge. Absolutely wow. huge for Sturgeon Bay to answer. And they're back within 10 with the PAT pending. And again, they missed their first one. They might go for two here. I would think. Back to an eight-point game, one-possession game. And it looks like they got the offense out there. Boy, from second and 26. To driving it all the way down, that was that was impressive. Lodel does a great job of finding guys. You know, he hasn't unleashed that big arm yet, but just does a nice job of finding that one guy that's in the soft spot. So here he is with Polzag in motion. Lodel rolls right under pressure, pressure through to the Incomplete. end zone. Looking for Caleb Polzak and left it short. So it'll stay at a 10-point game. Wrightstown will get the football after the kickoff, and they've got some time to work with. Here. No question. Buck 33 is a long time, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them put it in the air. You know, Wrightstown's one of those teams that always has good athletes at quarterback. It doesn't matter, you know, what offense they run. They always have their best athletes at quarterback. Yeah, that's Even if they go with somebody a little bit new tonight, don't be surprised if they do that. Especially true when Trevor Vanda is out there, one of the best athletes, certainly baseball-wise, in the state. Getting looks from some big schools for baseball. Penn State on that list. Another score, Westy Pier 13 to nothing over Menominee Falls right now. If both Westy Pier and Kakana win, that would be a matchup next week. You might be at the land of the ghosts next Might be week. at well, the we'll land of the see. ghosts. But, anyway, but they're having win. a battle, yeah. right? They're tied right now, Kakana is. And they're playing at home, correct? They are, yep, yep. as the one seed against the eighth seeded Brookfield Central. You, that's you get those suburban Milwaukee schools. Yeah, I know. Teams. 
they're, they can be sneaky good. The Brookfield Centrals, the uh, certainly Franklin and Arrowhead. Arrowhead. Great teams over yep. the years. Arrowhead in a, or excuse me, Franklin in a unique situation tonight. No fans allowed to their game. Not exactly sure the backstory there. I, I know they said it had, had something to do with Kenosha Bradford, I believe they're playing. And uh, yeah, I saw that on uh, TMJ4's website, our sister station down there in Milwaukee. With Lance the Romance Allen. The legend himself. The legend. I had to go back and get that one. Yeah. And Slipped through the hands there of Caden Colwell. So tough field position here with 126 left to play in the first half. See what Right Sound elects to do. Playoff football's fun though, isn't oh, it's it? Great. Even these first rounds. It's I mean, awesome. giving kids an extra chance. You know what I'm surprised at though? There are teams with three wins that are in the playoffs this year. That's really unusual. It just shows there's there's not a great middle ground right now, is there? You've got great right. teams, you've got teams that, that aren't so good. and But three and wins should be the playoffs, that's unusual. That comes to mind, I believe they were three and six, and they're playing Notre Dame tonight. Yep. Tritons might make a run. They've got a good squad this year. Nice hole right there, nice carry once again. Humphreys with about four. We'll see how Wrightstown plays this here with a 10-point lead, a little more than a minute to go in the first half. They're going well, to come to the line. Yeah, they're coming to the scrimmage in a hurry, line of scrimmage. Wouldn't be surprised to see some play action come up. Humphreys, Humphreys again. again. Boy, he's going to have a lot of carries by the time this night is over, won't he? What do you have last week against Luxembourg Casco? 25 carries, 109 yards. He was keeping them in that game. Turned out to be a 16-12 LC win, but... Man, Wrightstown was right there. That's what I've heard. Let's talk with some Wrightstown people. Nice hole that time. Van de High with another carry. It was one of those last week. Luxembourg Cascos, both their touchdowns came on short fields. They got an interception, good field position, had a good kickoff return to set up the second touchdown. So if you don't get those two things, could have been a different game. Humphrey slips that time, goes down. So we mentioned this field is in beautiful shape. It's natural turf, natural grass. Pretty much like you'd have in your backyard. But I was talking to one of the guys, there's literally two inches of rain, or of water, standing water in the end zone this week. <laughs> Unbelievable. They did a phenomenal job getting this thing ready. Got to go deep here, 16 seconds. Thompson Ooh, overshot Oh, is that him intercepted? And yes, it is. Yes, it is. A diving interception by Bryce Polzak. All right, so 12 seconds to work with for the Clippers. and. They're at least close to Hail Mary territory here. Let's take another look. Polzak, their top receiver, showing off the hands on defense. Little play action. Had them just overshot his man. Had him open. Just overshot him. Tender receiver over there, Gavin Ducat. So Sturgeon so. Bay with the ball at its own 45, 55 yards to the end zone. A good throwing team. Let's see what they can pick up on this first and 10. Sitting well. Got a timeout called, I believe, yes, by Wrightstown. Do you see how Wrightstown was set up? Their deepest, deepest guys were at the, was it the 35-yard yeah, line? 20 yards off the about line About 20 of yards off, line, off this line of scrimmage, exactly. You've got to be careful with that, too, because Sturgeon Bay has got two timeouts here. I mean, they could pick up a 10, 15 Yeah, yard like a crossing line. pattern and yeah. then taking one shot to the end zone. I, I can't imagine he could hit the end zone from here. No, the they, 45. they need to pick up a little yardage first. Right, you'd have to, do like I said, a crossing pattern, call a quick timeout, and then put one in the end zone. Maybe their best shot. I don't exactly. Obviously, Lodl's got a good arm. They've thrown it a ton, but I would think you'd want to get comfortably to the 40-yard line, so 15 yeah, yards. Yeah, absolutely. But like you said, too, I mean, this Sturgeon Bay team, they've got more moxie than I thought I mean, as far as they're running the ball really well. I mean, and, and nobody was really expecting that. It's just you look at the, the size on the line. Right. We talked about before the game, and you think, man, Wrightstown really could control the trenches. But Sturgeon Bay has hung tough in yeah, that. Absolutely. Today. No question. And that make it, Mason Sackett is just incredible back there. All right, There's the quick one over the middle. To Anderson, who had that last touchdown. And Cordell Anderson gets about 10. So they'll have four seconds, and you called it exactly about the four. Well, you said the 40, but the 45, not bad. That might be a, a little. That's a stretch. A little outside the comfort zone to get it to the end zone. We'll see what they do. So let's see how deep the deep. Well, another timeout called by Wrightstown. Because you figure you're throwing Set it from defense. at least five yards 50. behind the line of scrimmage. Well, you, can, you know what? He might have an arm that could get it 50 yards. 
Maybe. That's big for a high school. That's big. Yeah. Well, he's also the leading well, passer in the I'll state, you, right? I'll tell you what, though. I'm excited to find out. Absolutely. That's could, the fun part of it. That could be another one of those big swings in the game. West DePier leading Menominee Falls. They mentioned 13 to nothing. Kakana tied up at 14. Notre Dame 21 to nothing over Ashwaubenon. Kimberly leading Appleton North 10 to nothing. And DePier leading Marshall 21 to 8. Yeah, that Marshall team was unique. Their first game of the year was supposed to be against Kimberly, and they forfeited. They didn't have enough players. Then somehow they still put together a season where they're the number one seed. Yeah, six and two in the regular season. Get the one seed. Kimberly, oh, they, what did they go, seven and one? That only yeah. lost to Kakana. They get the three. Yep. Computer. A little under pressure, That's and it. he slips, <laughs> and that'll end the half. And there were just about seven blue shirts were on the goal line. Good first half both ways. That was fun. 22 to 12 right sound lead as we head to break. We'll take a quick break as well. See you in two and a half minutes here on TV32. It's a 22 to 12 halftime lead for the Wrightstown Tigers over the Sturgeon Bay Clippers. A WIAA Division 5 level 1 playoff game. Hope you're having a good time watching. Thanks for spending your Friday with us. Brandon Kennard in for Ted Stefaniak tonight alongside the legendary John Mino, the man who never misses a sports showdown Friday night. Actually, I remember filling in for you last year, so I guess you missed at least one. Did I? Why? Ve Veterans Day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I had to speak at a Veterans Day. Yeah. You're, you're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's my only one in 22 years. Impressive. Yes. An impressive streak. The Thank Iron you. Man over here. Yes. Good point. Good point. But I'll tell you what, I don't think there's anything in the world better than high school football. I mean, it's just fantastic. Friday nights, there's, I'd never want to miss that, ever. We have our, it's, I'm being told it's a streak of tigers. You know how it's a pride of lions as a group of lions? A, a streak? streak I never tigers. knew that. I did not know that. That's what, uh, that's what the folks up here are telling us. All right. An ambush or a streak. That's outstanding. So I did not know. know that. Next time we have a group tackle. Yes. We know what or we have. Or a Jeopardy type thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Outstanding. Some more scores here. Uh, Luxembourg, Casco, 23 to nothing lead. Depeer now 28 to 8 over Marshall. And again. That's an eight versus a one. Yeah, an eight beating a one. Yes. And we it was kind of expected almost yes. with, with the way that the, the Southern door leading 28 to nothing. Uh, Kakana still tied up at 14. That's and West DePierre with the lead over Menominee Falls. Next time you get a Kakana update, let me know. Right? I right will. That's the, right And Sturgeon Bay there. leading, or excuse me, Kiwani leading Oconto 35 to nothing at halftime. Storm. Kiwani's really tough. Good. Really good. They're going to make a deep run. Did I, you know that I wrote their theme song, their fight song? I did not know yeah. that. How did that come to be? Because, well, it's a long story. But it's because they had to change their nickname yep, at the time. Yep, went to the storm. So they yep. went to the storm. So I, I gave, I wrote it. It's to uh, Riders on the Storm. Kiwani is the storm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wrote the whole thing. It does it all, folks. They said they played it on the bus all the way down to the state, and they won the state championship. Is that girls basketball that year? No, it's football. Football? I, know, I, remember they, I remember calling some of their games on radio when they won a girls basketball state championship. Stay with me. 10, We're talking football. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know. But, uh, yeah, When's their, taking their last football okay. championship? What, what year was that? The year? Yeah. 12, 10, 11? Okay. Somewhere in that range? Right in that range. All right. Well, they might yes. be back there this year with the way they've been playing. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. They've been dominant, haven't they? They really have. I mean, they beat, I think the score against uh, Southern Door was 56 to 8 or something in that and range. And we thought that was going to be a nail biter. They're a good team. All right. It's 22 to 12 here, Wrightstown over Sturgeon Bay. We've obviously talked a lot about Danny Lodel, the Clippers quarterback. Mentioned he overcame a very serious injury last year. Didn't even think he was going to come back to play as a senior, but here he is leading the state in passing. Caitlin Holt, your Door County neighborhood reporter, has that story. It was like a seven month recovery. A lot of therapy, a lot of rehab. After a season-ending ankle injury last year, Danny Lodel said he wasn't sure what was next for his football career. I wasn't expecting to play this season, but we made, made stuff happen. After two surgeries, countless doctor's visits, and putting time into his ankle, Lodel said the support of his teammates made him determined to get back on the field. Carl Waterstreet, the varsity football coach for Sturgeon Bay, says Lodel is a special player. He's the kind that kind of lays it all on the field. Waterstreet says he remembers the injury like it was yesterday and he is beyond proud of the recovery Lodel has made. He's determined, he's goal orientated and everything that you're looking for in an 18 year old kid coming out of high school and um, solid leader of our team. Currently ranked number one in the state for passing yards, Lodel says he feels great but he wasn't always confident in the recovery period. But my mind, positive mindset 
and battle through it and got better. Now, Lodl says the stats don't mean much to him. He'd rather focus on his future and possibly continuing his football career. I don't really look at the stats that much. Try to focus on college, going to college and stuff. Let's we'll see what the future brings us. That's Caitlin Holt, your Door County neighborhood reporter with the story. Great season for Lodl, and he's got two more touchdown passes tonight, up to 26 on the season. Time to hit a quick break. We'll be right back from Wrightstown on Showdown. Ha. Time to smile. Tonight's Smile Cam brought to you by North Star Dental Group, changing your life by changing your smile. Talk to Dr. Pete in Appleton and Sheboygan. Dr. Pete's the best, I'm telling you. It's the guy to go to. Lot to smile Good looking about. smiles out there tonight, huh? Absolutely. Lots of kids come to high school football games these days. I love that. It's just great to see, isn't it? That was always yeah. the social event when I was in high school. Yeah, no question. But um, last week, Ted and I were like kind of cuddling together almost under the tarp. You know what I mean? Because that wind was coming through and blowing it's through. Interesting so word choice. Yeah, I didn't I, mean I, that I, word. I, you, you ever say something it's like, I didn't mean that word. Yeah, I didn't mean huddle, that word. Let's go huddling. Huddling. Huddling was the word I, I mean, said. What did you think what, I said? What? Well, you said cuddle. No, I didn't. I meant fine. huddling. I, I know, but I meant huddling. Whatever it makes. I know you guys have worked together a long time. We're, we're huddling. Yeah. Okay. But then we walk out, and these kids just having a blast. <laughs> high yeah. school kids. They yeah. didn't. In the rain. Care. They yeah. were soaked. They were yelling. Didn't they were laughing. Them, huh? They didn't have a single problem. <laughs> All right. It's a ten-point Wrightstown lead. Surgeon Bay hanging in there. Big Absolutely. touchdown at the end of the uh, first half. Kind what of a big missed two-point conversion. Yeah. yeah. The thing that stood out to me though is Wrightstown is as advertised. They can really run the football well. Uh, tough defense. Sturgeon Bay still hasn't really found a rhythm, I don't think. They've had some nice drives. Every time they've had the football, again, there were no punts in this first half. They just have to avoid the catastrophic plays, such as that interception and things like that. But I think Sturgeon Bay getting the ball back here to start the second half, I think now they've got a little bit more figured out with this Wrightstown defense. And I expect to see, the, but, but their running game has been outstanding, really Sturgeon has. Bay's, something we didn't normally see. No real explosives on the ground, but, you know, four or five-yard pickups just kind of extend drives. It's uh, It's been impressive so far there for the Clippers. They will get the ball first to start the second half. We're a few minutes away from that. In the meantime, time for another quick break here on Showdown. 22 to 12, right down over Sturgeon Bay at the half. The teams are back on the field warming up. We're about two minutes away from the start of half number two. Sturgeon Bay will get the ball to start the third quarter, and we'll have that action for you after one more word from our sponsors on TV32. Second half underway. Here's Bryce Polzak on the return for the Clippers, getting it up to about the 27-yard line, and that's where the Sturgeon Bay offense will take over down 10. He does a little bit of everything, doesn't he? Had the interception, had a touchdown receiving <laughs> as the kickoff returns. Kicks. That's, a, that's the way they do it in that's Division That's the five. way you do it, absolutely. You get those handful at, of just really good athletes and you build around them and then fill in the spaces around them. So here we go, Sturgeon Bay did not punt in that first half. They scored and they turned it over. Give it to Sackett on first down, and he's got nowhere to go. Vanderhei meets him right at the line of scrimmage. Peyton Vanderhei, that was a form tackle, wasn't it? He played it exactly well, didn't go for the fake, broke down his knees, and just took him down. That was a picture-perfect tackle right there by number 10. 5'11", 185-pound senior. Well, we got three Van de Heijs on the team, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, three. <laughs> They're all, all related one way or another. That's one of those names. I, I know that because I was one of those names in Luxembourg. Every small town has it. Absolutely. Lodel in the gun. Sack it behind him. He'll fake it this time. That looked like it might uh, have been a broken, broken play. play. Yeah. Because he actually turned. Either he turned the wrong way or the running back went the wrong way. I think it was going to be a fake. I don't know if he was actually going to hand off. But either way, it just didn't work. So struggling here coming out to start the second half. I was expecting something a little... Of course, they've, they've had a lot of third downs. As we mentioned, they had a second and 26 they overcame. So I'm not writing them off in this drive, but just thought they would come out a little bit, uh, a little bit spunkier. Because yeah, this is a big one. This is big. You want to give Wrightstown good field position to start the second half when you're down by 10. Third and nine. Danny Lodel. Under pressure now, throws over the middle, and he's got Oh, wow, what a Hayes. throw. Under heavy pressure, 
He knew he was going to get clobbered from behind, stood tall, and once again threaded the needle. That's the thing we're seeing from him. So incredibly accurate. Now, how good has this kid been? Wow. The interception, but other than that, this might be the most impressive throw Look, yet. Look, he knew Big 72 was coming his way. Now, that's Sam Kuehler coming right at him. 6'3", 260-pounder, or 200-pounder. So big first down for Sturgeon Bay to start this second half. Two left and one right, receiver-wise. Hand off to the big man. Sackett picks up about three. And he was just wrestled down there by Brandon Nowitzki, 5'11", 250-pound junior. It's a perfect type of nose tackle in this level, isn't it? 5'11", 250. Yeah, just short little. Yep. And sometimes that, that just height, when you're, the shorter you are, gives you the more leverage down there, too. Absolutely. So many times those guys are wrestlers. Yeah. You know, yeah. they got that leverage. They got that getting low. You know how to use the angles. You think of, like, the Aaron Donald types. Absolutely. He, he's, not a, he's not a tall guy. That's right. But he is a big, strong guy. So second and seven. Swung out to Polzak, and well, he made something out of nothing there. Yeah, he picked up about four. Not a great pass that time, but a little way high. Yeah, fluttered a little. Yeah, and I think that threw the timing off a little bit, but they like that play where they have the two receivers as blockers and just hit it to the man that stays behind the line of scrimmage. Well, we talk about they don't run the ball a ton, and they have a little bit more tonight, but that's almost a running play yeah, right there. Exactly, you know, that, yeah, exactly. That's kind of their running game, those short little wide receiver screens. So third and one. You almost have to think Mason Sackett will get a call here, don't you? We shall see. Sackett is the back behind Lodel. They've been great on third down so far tonight. What does this third and one bring? Well, there he is, and he picked it up and then some. Big first down by Sackett. Taking up to about the 45-yard line of Wrightstown. Gets the nice hole. Good blocking that time. And picked it up. More scores here. Kimberly 10 to 7 over Appleton North. That's a tight one. That's a great first That's round. A great That's a matchup you usually see in Down the road. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And they just played last week. Right. To end the regular season, a 14 0 Kimberly win on that rainy night. Lodel. Hits the man underneath. That's Number Hayes. 10 once again. Boy puts his head down, gets some more yardage. Patrick Hayes. 5'10", 165, had 49 catches for 783 yards coming into this ball game. And close to a first down. They like that little crossing pattern, don't they? Well, I'll tell you what, though, I, get to, I like the way number 10, Peyton Van de Hay, plays football. Yeah, both sides I'm of the ball. I'm telling you, both sides of the ball, I love the way he plays football. So as I mentioned, Kimberly 10 to 7 over Ampton North, Southern Door 34 to nothing over Tomahawk. So they will be moving on to round two. Second and one. And you know who gets it? Big hole rumbling down for a big first down. Mason Sackett once again. Took a heck of a shot at the end of that play and is getting up real slow. Yeah, he might have to come out here. I think so. He took a shot. Yeah, he's gonna stay in. Heading right back to the huddle. Yeah, he is. Wow. That looked, like, looked like a good clean hit. It was. I'm not saying anything. No, nothing yeah, against absolutely. it. But just he was a little bit exposed when he took the shot. He wasn't inflicting the blow like he normally does when he carries the football. Got twisted around a little bit. Right there and took the shot. From big number 30, Landon Helfries, 190-pound senior. So another first down for Sturgeon Bay as they continue their movement with their offense. They've moved the chains all night long. Lotto will give to Sackett again, and not as much room about that two. time. Take to about the 25-yard line. I'll tell you what, 30 carries coming in on the season, and he's, he's so north of 10 must have, I was going to say, he must have a dozen yeah, minimum. Yeah, he doesn't look. He's going to come yeah, off. He's coming here. out now. He took a, quite the shot yeah. there a couple plays ago. Doesn't he look didn't, quite right. Yeah, he didn't hit that hole as strong as the other holes he's hit. We'll see because he's been a big part of their offense tonight, but even more so, he is the dude on defense. Well, you, know, you were talking though before the ball game that Wrightstown, one of the main things they want to do is just control, control the clock so his passing offense doesn't have the ball as much. In some ways, Sturgeon Bay is 
flipping that. Absolutely. They're controlling the clock because Wrightstown offense has been so proficient. Especially the way the first half ended. Right. Sturgeon Bay had a lot of time of possession there. Not much there. Caleb Polzak gets a couple. Now to the 23, third and five, a long five coming up. Kakan, as I mentioned, still tied at 14. Yeah, that's the one right now. Yeah, that's the one where it's, hmm. Well, that, we talked about the De Pere leading Milwaukee Marshall as an eight over one upset that we kind of expected, but that would be on the other side of that. After the season the Ghosts had, going right. eight and one, winning the FEA for the first time since 1995, that would be a surprise. That would be a shocker, especially playing at home. Trips right, third and five from the 22. Has time. Lodal over the middle, he's got a man. Oh, he had a man, he dropped it. In and out of the hands of, it looks like, Dominic Robertson. Yep. That'll be his first target tonight. Once again, though, threading the needle nicely. Under pressure. Oh, this line is doing a nice job, actually. Double teaming the big man over there on the right side. Puts it right where he needed to put it. All right, big play here, fourth and five. From the 22-yard line. Six-and-a-half-minute drive already for the Clippers to start the third quarter, but they got to convert Don't have anything here. to show for it, exactly. Fourth and five from the 22. Crowd making some noise here at home for Wrightstown. Lodo going, going for it deep. all, looking for pulls. And line. there's a Contact. flag, and yep, yep. I, he got knocked down. So it'll be pass interference. So that'll give him a first down. I believe that was Emerit, Everett Lavers in coverage there for Wrightstown. Bayport now leading 42 to nothing. So they're moving on to the second round without question. Home crowd not a fan of that call. They were looking for offensive interference. So big first down for Sturgeon Bay as they keep driving. As you mentioned, using up most of this third quarter while doing it. Yeah, it's been a long one. So that puts it on the 11-yard line. First and 10 from the 11. Get another look at that interference call. Yeah. As Sturgeon Bay comes to the line. But uh, and we'll have to yeah. see if we can get yeah. back to no, that. That's this. a big call. And off left side, he's got the sweep, trying to get the edge. He does. Caleb That's Caleb Polzak. All right, let's see if we can take another look at that pass interference because the crowd was uh, jeering for quite some time. Definitely con they, they warranted a flag either way. Yeah, there was definitely contact at the end, so no question about that. Let's take a look at it right here. Now, you yeah. be the judge. You be the judge on that one. I'm going to let you judge that one. I think it was a good call. I thought so in real time. Yeah. I think the replay confirmed that, but it's a big play in the game. Second and, and six from the seven. Sackett back in the game. He's behind Lodel here. Lodel will roll right under pressure trouble. again. Fires toward Polzag, and that's incomplete. I'll tell you what, he is so comfortable. That one's incomplete. Isn't he, though? He's comfortable on the run. Absolutely. No question about it. Doesn't get flustered. Like those little rollouts, he can buy a little more time. And that's smart against this big Wrightstown line as well. <laughs> How many yards has he put into a game running over to say he's, a far, he's on the far side over here, runs all the way across the field, yeah. gets the play, runs back to the huddle. Got to be in shape, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, the, it's the work in between downs that's keeping him busy. Absolutely. So third and six now from the seven-yard line. And he can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown at the one-yard line. Sackett bounces this out to the right. Mason Sackett with a good game. Didn't look like there was much there. Did a nice job following his blockers. His blockers did a nice job pushing the pile back. He did the rest. Now another huge play coming up. Fourth and one from the two-yard line. You don't see that very often. Fourth and one from the two, huh? Fourth and one for Sturgeon Bay. Quarterback sneak. It's a full yard, though, I'll tell you that. And they don't go under center, really. Well, he's got number four back in the backfield again, Mason Sackett. Fourth and one from the two-yard line. Huge play. This drive going on eight minutes now for the Clippers. Oh, now 
Timeout. Timeout called by Sturgeon Bay. Did you see what they did? They brought in Patrick Hayes from the right side to get under center. Let's take a quick break here with them. We'll be back with a big fourth and one play on Showdown. A 10 point Wrightstown lead. This has been one heck of a drive from Sturgeon Bay. Nine plus minutes now. But this is pretty much the whole thing right here. Fourth yeah, and one absolutely. This is huge. Fourth and one from the two yard line. And that's a full one. And Sturgeon Bay had unique playing going where they had the quarterback in the shotgun, but then they brought over the wingman, Patrick Hayes, to go under center, and that's when Sturgeon Bay called the timeout. Kind of a unique sequence of events to call the timeout after that happened. So here we go again. Fourth and one from the two-yard line for Sturgeon Bay. Hayes the man in motion again. Bodle hands to sack it. Sack it. It's, it's close. close. I don't know. Nope. I don't think he did got not, it. Did not get it. Wrights down with it. Wow. A huge stop. And a nine and a half minute drive from the Clippers. Ends at the Smart one and a half seven, yard line. Seven and a half minute drive ends with no points. That was big. What a big defensive stop for Wrightstown here. Big play. Number 30 getting in there. Landon Helfries. Outstanding play. He's had a heck of a game on defense. All right, Wrightstown did uh, take a safety last week, late in their game against Luxembourg Casco. They're in that same part of the field here. On the two-yard line. And stacked up after a gain of about one. Just buying some space there. Right, just trying to get out to have the shadow of your own end zone once again. Humphreys with the carry. He had a big first half. Have two touchdowns for him. Two again, over what, seven and a half minute drive? Wow, to start the third quarter. And 7.41. Wrightstown took over with 4.19 on the clock. So that's tough for Sturgeon Bay. That was an impressive drive. Just couldn't close it out. And credit to Wrightstown. Here come the Tigers again, right up the middle for Humphreys, who picks up maybe three. And we'll have a third down and four coming up. Tackle made that time by Mason Sackett, number four, who's just been... I don't think he's left the field other than when he got hurt a little bit, got the wind knocked out of him possibly, but he has been in on everything, playing linebacker, playing tailback, doing a little bit of everything. So third and four from the eight, that's manageable for Wrights down. See what they come out with, tight formation, very tight formation. And he powers to, I believe, a first down. That's Humphreys. Yep, he got it. And it is a first down. So three carries from Humphreys results in 11 yards, just enough. That was big. Now you're out in the breathing room a little bit more out near the, what, the 15-yard line? Versus being on your own two-yard line where a fumble or anything like that could turn this ball game. So fresh set of downs coming up now for Wrightstown. Third man through, just pushing the pile. <laughs> Nothing fancy, Wrightstown football, doing what they can. Humphrey again with about his 30th carry of the night. <laughs> I've lost track at this point. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Up there. His number gets called an awful lot. Big gain, though, gain of five. Well, that one to spring up a second and five from their own 17-yard line. So still that very tight formation, no receivers out anywhere. Full house backfield. Little inside trap that oh, time. Nice hit. Big hit. Not much of a gain at all. Maybe one. I'll bring up third down and four. There's a big offensive lineman right there for Wrightstown, Brandon Novitsky, 250 pounder. Third and three for the Tigers. We're inside two minutes to play already in the third quarter. Well, this third quarter has taken about exactly as long on the score clock as it has in real time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. been, I Not a lot of stoppages. I don't think it's ever stopped. Humphreys again. Big gain. First down. And he picks it up. And before the fresh set of downs, let's take a quick break here on TV32. And we're back after a short run. Looked like maybe no, no gain, gain really. first down. Humphreys. Moving down to the last minute of play here of the third quarter. So it'll be second down and 10 from their own 23 for Wrightstown. 
As I mentioned, they started this drive on their own two-yard line when Sturgeon Bay had a fourth and one from the two, and they were stacked up. Big defensive play. Two big defensive plays for Wrightstown tonight, the interception and that goal line stand. It's essentially the difference in the game right now. They turn that interception into a yep. touchdown. Ooh, a lot well, of space This has a here. chance. A lot of room on the left side. Jaden Kiddo, who had a big Kinda gain slipped. on that same play in the first half. Yep. On the, the first drive, in fact. That time he got about Turf kind of reached up and pulled him down. That'll be the last play, you would think, of the third quarter. The and seven. It'll it be is. Third and three rights down when we come back on Showdown. And that's over the 45. All right, well, Wrightstown picked it up on third and three. Let's take another look. And at almost broke it. Another Aiden Humphreys For six. Run. Watch this. Humphreys right there. Burst through the line and taken down by the ankles. It's a big stop right there for Zachary Robel with the stop for Sturgeon Bay. Notre Dame now leading Ashwaubenon on 49-7. to seven. Another good run for Humphreys. Or you can Big tell run of nine. Wow, almost a first down, gain of nine. Kakana now 21-14 to 14 over Brookfield Central. I want to remind you again, tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Simon's Cheese. Experience the best of Wisconsin at Simon's Cheese Little Shoot. Ted and I stopped there a couple of weeks ago. We're going to that Little Shoot ball game. Great Fantastic. Stuff. Grilled cheese sandwiches. Outstanding. I did not realize they had grilled cheese. Fantastic. Oh, and Ted great. bought. Man, I know. that never happens. It has not happened in 22 years. Another big run for Humphreys. Man, he's just bursting through to the second level. Yep, and all of a sudden this offensive line, oh, flag, very late flag. The lead official came running in from the offensive side of the ball and threw the flag. Looks like it's against Sturgeon Bay. And sportsmanlike conduct after the play. Okay. Let's see if we can see that if we get a chance. Wow, this moves it all the way up to the 24-yard line. Well, this drive already has gone from the 2 out to the Sturgeon Bay, 19. Luxembourg Casco, 30 to nothing over Little Shoot. So your alma mater keeps on rolling. I'll tell you what. They look like they're on a crash course with two rivers for a level three matchup, but you got to get there. Uh, Quade Thompson will keep it this time. Yeah, big hole that time. Quade Thompson hasn't carried the ball much tonight, but a big carry right there. And I'll tell you what, Wrightstown has to be thinking, you know, we get seven here with the way this game is going. That could be the cushion. Could be curtains. Right. Because as I mentioned, this is just a fast moving game. Holy cow. And Wrightstown not doing anything fancy, staying in their meat and potatoes offense. And this young guy getting a lot of carries, just fighting hard. Wow, that's outstanding football. Aiden Humphreys came into the ball game with 987 yards. Close to first down yardage. You know, in the pros, they don't count postseason stats in a person's overall stats. High school, they do, though, don't they, for a career? They do, they do yep. Yeah. Um, College has gone back and forth. Wasn't that the whole Ron Day yes. thing where his yes. goal stats didn't yes. count, but then they changed And I remember it. Brett Farvo said that's the dumbest thing in the world because it's so much harder right. to have success. Those games are bigger. Yep. Those are bigger. Every team is good you're playing against. They don't count. There he is again. Another big space. hole. Yep. Offensive line right now for Wrightstown is taking control of this football game. Got the big hole there. Took it over the left side. Gain of five. Second down and five. Has he been a workhorse, hasn't he? Just incredible. I wish I'd kept up with tallying his carries. because uh, That's impossible. It's We've tried that over the oh, years. Tough. <laughs> I think next year we're going to hire us a stat man. That'd what do you think? That'd be great. That's what we need. Actually, they could sit at home and do it even. That's true. You know? Just text you. Exactly. Same man, same play. Push the pile down to about the three. Be close to a first down. I don't think he got it. will bring up third down. But again, no punts in tonight's ball game. I don't know if I've ever seen a game where there were zero punts. It's been strange. A lot of long drives. Everything's a long drive. Turnovers, turnovers on downs, touchdowns, obviously. But yeah, no punts. And if right scores, like it's a crazy high-scoring game either. Here's Humphreys again, looking for his and third he's TD, and, and he's for got the it. touchdown. 
98-yard drive for Wrightstown. How to turn a ball game around. A seven and a half minute drive for Sturgeon Bay, taking it down to the two yard line. All they needed was a yard for a first and goal and they were stymied. And now Wrightstown comes back with a 98 yard drive. But you see how that offensive line now is starting to lead the way for Wrightstown. A hat trick for Humphreys, his third touchdown of the night. And this is a big extra point here for Daniel Bunton to make it a three score game. He has shown an outstanding leg so far tonight. They went for two last time, kicking the extra point this time, and it's good. So make it a 17-point lead for Wrightstown. They're in control here on Showdown. The U.S. Cellular is giving away $20,000 for distraction-free vacation. To enter and for official rules, go to 20kvacay.com. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. That's 20kvacay.com from U.S. Cellular. What an impressive drive by Wrights down that time. Impressive stand at the goal line and then driving 98 yards right through the heart of that Sturgeon Bay defense. That was very, very impressive. You eating some Halloween candy over there? Well, no. Is it an Almond Joy? No. They got a whole bowl up here. It's tempting. Could you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. But I think it's just because I knew. <clears throat> I might have just gave you away. DePierre now leading 43-8 to eight over Marshall. Unbelievable. Eight seed over a one to be up by But it's crazy points. that they were given a one seed. That's ridiculous. It really, it's really ridiculous. Is. There have been question marks every year. Yeah. A good return here. Great return. Polzak. Bryce Polzak. All right, as Sturgeon Bay's offense takes the field, I want to remind you, free of charge, walk in for any injury assessment and immediate evaluation by the Bell & Health, Titletown Sports Medicine and Orthopedics team. Save the cost of an ER or urgent care visit for sports injuries for every member of your family. Play like a kid, heal like a pro. That's Bell & Health, the official health care partner of Sports Showdown. Another score update, and it's a big one. Kakana now 26-14 lead. So the ghost galloping away with that one. Yeah, we're not about galloping away yet, but at least they're getting a little bit of breathing room. And that would set up that huge showdown with possibly Westy Pier. And that one would definitely be on our short list for next week in level two. Here's Lodel stepping up. He's got some space, picked up maybe four. Nice job that time, showing some quick feet. That was a great story you guys had at halftime about a seven-month rehab to come back from a broken ankle. Yes. Broken, dis mm. broken in three spots, dislocated. I mean, that uh, doesn't just sound sounds painful. painful oh, even my just goodness. thinking about it. And you know, to be back out here running around like that, leading the entire state in passing this year, that's incredible. Really impressive. Congratulations to him. But now he's going to work some magic to keep his career alive. They're going to want a quick strike here. Second and six. We've seen this a lot. Rolling left, <laughs> and he's under pressure. Lodel goes down. Big play from the Wrightstown defense. A couple guys in there. Yeah, they're just going after him right now. Big number 75, Braden Novitsky, 5'11", 250, one of the guys in there. Trent Vandehei in there as well. Yeah, they had a bunch 69. of blue shirts back there. Yep, there's Vandehei, the first one to him. All right, third and 10 now for the Clips. Their most impressive play of the night was when, or not play, but their most impressive little sequence was when they had a second and 26 Back deep in their territory in the first half. They overcame that. And I think everything is four down territory now, don't you? Has to be. Three Has score to be game. three scores. Lodel. As the short man. Not much. Gain of about three. I think that's Hayes, and it'll be Bring a big a fourth, fourth down. down. Mm -hmm. You know, he wears a pretty good number for a quarterback, number 16. And I'm not, I'm not extrapolating in any way, shape, or form, which is a good word. But he reminds me a little bit of Joe Montana with how cool he is back there. Yep. A lot of pressure coming around him, and he just kind of stays cool and, you know, hits his man. Can't think of any other 16s besides Joe off the top of my head. Not a lot of but them. he's good. Think of he's good enough for all of them. It's not a huh? bad one to uh, emulate. Fourth and six. Lodel over the middle. Hayes has got one. Oh, to big do and he won't tackle. Get there. Big tackle. I'll tell you what, Helfrey number 30, Landon Helfrey has made so many big tackles, it's incredible. Wrightstown will take over. Another look at it. 
And we will take a quick break as the Tigers offense comes back out of the field. Well, guess who? Yeah. As we were gone. Just incredible. Aiden Humphreys. Ten yard game, gain, first just, down. He just, Johnny just limped off the field. He's on the sideline right now. Oh, boy. Um, first team to make it to the second round, Kiwani. Four to two to nothing win tonight. Storming into level two. Storm. Kiwani is the storm moving into level two of the high school football playoffs. Timeout called by Wrightstown. And we'll take one with them. Tigers in control and looking to finish this one off on showdown. Tonight's Down and Distance is brought to you by Gandrid West Mason Value Center. Offering quality vehicles at one low price and competitive financing options. Purchase with confidence from Gandrid West Mason. It is first and ten, speaking of down and distance. And this second half has belonged to Wrightstown. Obviously, Sturgeon Bay had that tremendous drive, taking it down to the two-yard line, seven and a half minutes. But ever since that goal line stand, it has been all Wrightstown. I'll tell you what, I'm keeping my eye on the sideline right now with Aiden Humphreys, who limped off after that first down carry. They're already down their quarterback, Trevor Vandehei. And now their star running back. Looks like he's trying to sidelines. stretch out his like maybe cramp something yeah. like that. I mean, he's standing there just kind of stretching. And we've got uh, still not ready to go here. The officials are coming over to the sideline to talk with the Wrightstown staff. And his head looks like. I have no idea Steve what that's Clister about, to be honest there. with you. Steve Clister, who has been in Wrightstown pretty much. Since Forever. 80, 89, he's <laughs> been on the something? staff. Yeah. Graduated from Wrightstown in 84. Yep, coach here the whole time. So, well, they're looking up towards the booth. They're looking at us. They need something from us there? <laughs> I don't know. Might be. Okay. Checking well, as, something. As we await play to resume, we want to remind you, Security Lifkey, a big sponsor of Sports Showdown. We've all been touched by a friend or family member with cancer. That's why Security Libke Roofing is donating a portion of their October sales to breast cancer research. To learn more, visit securitylipkeroofing.com. Great company. Shannon Alberts and that entire gang. Great company. They do a lot of things for charity, a lot of things for local people, a lot of things for veterans. And I don't really know what's going on here. It might be, uh, I see a security running off to the left okay. side of the field. Down in the uh, left end zone. Well, we are waiting for a little time here. I would say I can only sing the national anthem and I only sing it in the show. I've never seen something like no, this No, me before. neither. They're, but you're right. There are two security guys. Uh, and two officers. And two officers side. walking in the end zone, the far end zone. And I don't know where they're going. I've got the binoculars on it, but I'm still not sure what's going on here. Actually, there's three officers. Going over toward the uh, Sturgeon Bay side. Not sure why they didn't just cut across the field. <laughs> what yeah, saved it's a lot not of like, not like the game's going on. <laughs> okay, they're still walking. Let's see. So I've got my if if we can get a camera shot of that over on the Sturgeon Bay side. Yeah, guy, look at approaching the bleachers on the Sturgeon right. Bay side. I've not, I've never seen something like this before. Are they going to the stands? Again, they're still walking there's on the a, track. A look at it. We've got it up now. Well, there we go. I mean, those are three police officers. Yes, yes it is. And they're talking to one gentleman. I've never seen a game stop for something like this. In all the years I've done games, I've never seen a game stopped. Nor have I. For whatever is happening here. Let me, let me talk to these folks, see if they have an idea what's going on. If you can sure, hold go ahead. For Absolutely. A but once again, we've got 6:18 left to play in the ball game. Right state, right down with the football. The game has been stopped. There are three officers talking to somebody in the stands on the Sturgeon Bay side of the field. There doesn't seem to be any real, you know, aggression taking place or anything like that. And there's a Wrightstown representative over there with them. Did you find out anything? Uh, they're not sure. I'm told it's. they said something with one of the Sturgeon Bay fans. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure uh, you know what exactly that entails, but uh, Wrightstown is coming back on the field now. No disrespect, but why do you stop a game for that? Uh, it could have been a security issue of some sort that they were trying to be cautious okay. about. All right. Let's okay. See if, see if we can get any more information on that. That's a, a curious situation there. 
I've never seen that I've before. I've never, ever. You've been doing to this. To stop a game a for time. that, no. All right, here we're back. Here's Quade Thompson, the quarterback keeper. Gets a few. It's about five. And number 35 coming back in the ball game for Wrightstown. Good to see. Aiden Humphreys, as I mentioned, it almost seemed like he was cramped up with the way he was stretching once he got to the sidelines. I think you're right. Although not to make light of that, I, I was one of those guys who used to get cramps during ball games. Yeah. So bad. It's, you want to talk about pain? Gosh. I mean, yeah. not, not to sound like, but when you're in the middle of the game and you cramp up, I'm telling you, that's, that's not fun. The only bright spot is you know it's not going to last big too hit. long. Oh, well, you lose the ball Yeah, he there. did. And oh, Sturgeon Bay ball. Wow. Big hit coming up that time. Hayes with the big hit. Robertson with the recovery for Sturgeon Bay. So 535 left. Sturgeon Bay will have another shot to try to drive down the field. Got a feeling they might start going a little bit deeper now, don't you? Might have to. Been going with a lot of those crossing patterns. So here we go, Sturgeon Bay with the football on their own 29-yard line. 5.35 left to play in the game. But they need three scores. Play action, has time. Oof. Another nice pass, though. I'll tell you what, Cordell Anderson, the intended receiver, and again, he just threads the needle as good as any high school quarterback I've seen in a long time. Yep, he's had a few of those throws right over the middle in mm -hmm. between the zone. So Luxembourg Casco looks like it is final, if I'm not mistaken, 37 to nothing. Either way, they'll be moving on to round number two. Still waiting for a final in the Kakana store score. They were up 12 last we heard, right? 26-14. Yes. Yep. So a lot of local teams with some success tonight. There Absolutely. There were a lot of all local matchups either, which is rare. No, for very the few. DePierre now leads 43 to 8. Kimberly final. Kimberly 10 to 7 with the win over Apton North. Seems about right. That's a quick one down there, too. I guess. As this man who wheels for a first down, that's Patrick Hayes. Good gain. Who had the big hit on the other end. You know, Appleton North, one of those teams over the last few years, just heartbreakingly close losses. The Franklin game. Oh, I, that was incredible when they had the lead in the fourth quarter. Mm. State semifinal a few years ago. It was 2021. Miles Burkett, the quarterback yep. then for Franklin. He's now the number two quarterback basically for the Badgers. A lot of people calling for him to be the number one. But, Over Locke. Uh, It'll be yeah, interesting. We'll see what Braden Locke see shows at Illinois tomorrow. Right. Trips left, one right. Lodo looks deep. Oh, under pressure. Big pressure now. Good job getting and rid of it. And, yeah, incomplete over the left side. It, Bayport's a final. 49 to nothing as they just keep on rolling. I was over at Milwaukee Riverside. I'll tell you what, I, I came around on Bayport this year. Beginning of the year, they, they had a tough schedule. Yeah. They had Middleton and then Kimberly, who at the time were 1-2 in the state. Right. But I, I thought, yeah, this looks like it might be a down year for the Pirates, which down year for them is like 6-3, and three, right? Well, they ended up going 7-2. and two. They've won eight games in a row now, and I think yeah. they could make a run to state. And that quarterback has really developed. Oh, that Carter quarterback has standing. really, really come on. Some of the throws he made last yeah. week in that game, he had one to the running back, Blake Bookinger, that was like Exceptional. dropped it in the bucket Absolutely, the no question about it. They, especially in that, uh, that's the region with De Pere and uh, Milwaukee Marshall, too. So you've already got the one seed eliminated in that region. Oh, knocked away. Nice deflection. Very nice. I'll tell you what, watch out for the Pirates this year. No question that's about it. Trent Vandehei with a nice play for the Tigers. Vandehei, 6'2", 230-pounder. So third and 10 now. Yeah, yeah, nice nice play right there. Had a man wide open on that right side. In regards to that, whatever it was over the stands, I mean, they're still all just talking, but I don't see anything happen. And yeah, now they're they're faced back toward the field now. Yeah, not talking watching to the game. In the right. bleachers, so you assume that situation's resolved. I just don't know why the refs had to stop the game for so long for that. Yeah. That was crazy. So here's third and ten. Lodo looks deep. Coverage is good. That Nearly was really good coverage. Eli Absolutely. Eli Lemke on the defense for Wrightstown. He was right with his man the whole time. Well, DePierre is not holding back. I think DePierre said, oh, you're number one seed. Watch this. 50-8, <laughs> DePierre with the lead. Southern Door, 48-7. Bayport, 49-0. As I mentioned, Kimberly wins that ball game 10-7 over Appleton North. Yeah, the questions about the Well, the Appleton North game process. we did. Last play of the game, basically. Yeah, the receiver the had a chance line. to try to reach. Finish. Yeah. That was against Kakana. Mm-hmm. 
Big win for the Ghosts on their way to the conference title. Southern Door has gone final, it looks like, 48 to 7. So they await the winner of this one, looking like Wrightstown right now. That'd be a great Fourth matchup. Fourth and ten, absolutely. Matchup up in Brussels. Here's this to stay alive. Oh, no, we just can't hit his man. And that should do it for Sturgeon Bay tonight. Turning it over on downs. 4.55 left to play. Wrightstown will have the football. And there are very few guarantees in sports, but I'm going to make one right now. The ball will not go in the air. <laughs> Can I make that one? Uh, well, they've only thrown it twice, huh? Yeah, I don't I think they're going to no do it now. No reason to do it now. Hey, before we uh, get back into action here, I want to remind you, all things gold, silver, and platinum. We are the Fox Cities experts. Vakes, Fox Valley, Coin, and Diamond, a proud sports showdown partner. Full house backfield once again for Wrightstown. Just trying to run the clock now. First man through, still running hard. Once again, that offensive line for Wrightstown, they, they get the game ball in my opinion because they're now opening up big time. Holds right now. Landon Helfrey with the run that time. By the way, looks like Wrightstown will hold on. We talked about Coach Clister. This will be his 200th win. Oh, that's awesome. At Wrightstown. Think about that. That includes the co-head coaching wins. That's 20 years of yeah. 10 wins. That's incredible. There was a period there where we was an assistant too, right? Forever, yeah. When uh, yep. Matt Binsfeld was here, who's now at Kakana. Is that right? Yep. They were co-head coaches? All right. Binsfeld went down the road to his alma mater, and he's got them humming right now, the Galloping Ghosts. Helfrey once again with the carry. Gentlemen, I introduced you to earlier, Bill Ainert. That was coach nice here for. Him. Yeah. The co-head coach with Clister for all those years. Yep. Won three state championships. They had well, they had some athletes. They were, I mean, it was, it was the same type of football team, but they were really good. But this team's really good, too. I'm not taking this team uh, lightly with anybody they play. When you have an offense like this and you've got an offensive line like that. You know, one thing about this ball game that we're talking, Sturgeon Bay, um, I thought that interception was big because Wrightstown scored on that one, made it a two-touchdown game. And then, obviously, when they had that amazing drive down to the two-yard line and didn't get the first down on fourth and one, those were the two plays that I thought really made a big – because because in both situations, Wright, Wrightstown made them pay. Yep. Wrightstown really made them pay a, a price for those two miscues. And those were, I think, fair to say the plays last week against Luxembourg Casco, Wrightstown couldn't quite make right. some of those key stops in yeah. big moments. And tonight, nice bounce back win for them. And it's turning into a pretty convincing win, too. But man, credits, I've been impressed with Sturgeon Bay. No question. You know, they're they're going to come out on the wrong end of this one, but this program has got to be real proud of no what question. they put on the field and Absolutely. what they've done the last few years. Totally agree. Totally agree. Again, going from eight man football to 11, make the playoffs for the first time and what, 11 years? And they made it last year. No, I know, but once they started with, yeah, the, you right. know, with this yep. run, so to speak, yep, with this right. group after eight-man football. first year back in 11-man to make exactly. the playoffs right away. That's yep. impressive. That's very impressive. And they're going to bring in the uh, Whole bunch of clean jerseys. Looks like here. Line going change in coming yep. on. Shift change. And these seniors and, the, and well, juniors, too, should come out to a nice round of applause from the hometown fans. As well they should. It's a heck of a sports town, I'll tell you that. Their fans are very loyal. They've had some success here, too. Went to the state championship game in boys basketball a few years ago. Yep. They were a couple trips to state for the girls basketball team. Yep. Great program there. That was a bunch of tough wrestlers. Absolutely. And timeout called by Wright Sound as they try to get the right people in the right positions. So next week's going to be a... Interesting one. Wrightstown Southern Door. That's one of many. One of many. That's going to be a great football game. Luxembourg Casco will be taking on the uh, Tritons, I believe, right? I believe Keel, if Keel won oh, tonight. Keel? I can't remember. Okay. They're in, diff they're in different divisions. Oh, that's right. Now, now they are. You're right. Because LC is usually in D3. Exactly, but that's right. They dropped down to four this yeah. year. You're correct. Yeah, that's what's amazing. A lot of times teams don't know what division they're going to be, what level they're going to be in until it all comes out. But, you know, one thing that this time of year, too, we've, we've talked about it before, but and even, I don't know, Coach LaFleur or different people say, no matter how good you've been all year, there's such a difference between being really good this time of year versus early in the year. 
Yeah. It's those teams that kind of stay healthy and they can peak and they can keep it going. Those are the important games. Handoff up the middle for a gain of about three. As we're winding this one down. But this is fun now when you look at all the winners and see which games we'll take next Friday night. You know it's going to be a dandy. It's one of my favorite Friday night traditions. Even in the regular season, we always look right away. Yeah. All right, what do we got next week? Absolutely. What games are we covering next week? Absolutely. So I'm excited. John Miller and I will get together, look at the brackets, see where we're going next week. Obviously, you and Ted will confer, see where showdown's going. Got some great options there. I imagine that decision will be made by the end of the weekend. Teddy will be back next week, we assume. If he decides to leave South Dakota. Exactly. He might just hunker down there for a while longer. Cameron Schumacher, the Cameron Schumacher with the carry that time for Wrightstown. Very impressive. This is a very impressive Wrightstown football team. They hit hard. They're big. They're talented. And they could go deep in the playoff run. Although, as you mentioned, there are no gimmies after this. You know, the first round's kind of whatever sometimes. Right. But, and, and that shows up in some of these scores, you know, 49 to nothing type scores. You hit that round two, and you're going up against a real good football team. There's not even a question about that. Another carry over the left side. Riley Sundin Riley with the carry. Sundin with the carry. Got a th nice thank you seniors chant coming from the Sturgeon Bay side. And you bet. It's an impressive crew. They're losing a lot, but they've got a really good... Uh, Eighth grade class right now, they say. That'll be freshman next year. So maybe in a few years. Well, who knows? I mean, I don't and you know what? They still year, get to go back and live in Sturgeon Bay, which is not a bad <laughs> thing. Under the bridge. I would take that. I'll tell you what. That's the most beautiful town. Flag thrown. I think uh, Wrightstown had too many players on the field. As one of their guys tried getting off, didn't get off in time. Coaches always like to have things to work on in practice, right? So. <laughs> That'll be one of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Offensive lineman substitutions in the last 20 seconds. Yeah, I think they can work on that. Everyone could stick around a little bit after the end of the game. Here we do have a something. Fun night. Good night working with you, my man. Absolutely. So that was fun. Your mom listening? <laughs> Probably. Okay. She's a fan <laughs> of mine, isn't she? Uh, yes. She told me that. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's like, I love when you and Mino are together. Yeah. <laughs> Did she say something like she wishes you were a lot more like me or something like? I wasn't so. it something yeah. along those lines? Yeah. Well, I found out tonight you're an inch taller than I am, apparently. Yeah, so. I don't know. Let me see. I, I half an inch. I was gonna think? go back to back, but now, now he's just right in my face. <laughs> 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 like we said, after work with Ted at six foot eight, it's good to be a couple of guys about a foot shorter. Absolutely, and that will do it. The final seconds ticking off. The Wrightstown Tigers. An impressive win here in level one to advance to the second round of the WIAA Division V playoffs. 29 to 12, the final. And that was nothing but old school Wrightstown football. Just as we expected, yep, right? Yep, absolutely. Coach Clister, win number 200, which is amazing. Congrats to Steve. We'll be right back to wrap it up after this word from our message, from our sponsors. The Tigers a 29-12 victor over the Clippers of Sturgeon Bay. Welcome you back one final time with us. Brandon Kennard and John Mino on the mic with you this evening. An impressive victory over a really, really tough Sturgeon Bay squad tonight. And the Tigers advance to level two. They will travel to Brussels next week, playing another Door County team, Southern Door, in level two of the D5. Great playoffs. matchup. Really great matchup. Should be a really, really good one. We've got some options for showdown next week with uh, looks like West of Pierre Kakana as well, if those scores help. Still waiting on that one. Yeah, I'm still waiting on a final on Kakana. You see the Tigers there, victorious. Their head coach, Steve Klister, getting his 200th career victory. Heck of a milestone. And before we go, let's uh, show you the highlights from this one. It was well, let's a do it. hard fought, competitive game. First half, yeah, especially was outstanding. Early on, there's the man, the workhorse. We knew he was going to have a big ball game tonight, and he did Aiden Humphreys with a touchdown right there. Coming back with that vaunted passing attack on their first possession, Bryce Polzak with the catch from that good-looking quarterback. A little play action for Wrightstown, something we didn't expect to see, but the touchdown pass over in the right corner of the end zone to Gavin Ducat for the score, and then Humphrey. How many times do we call Humphrey's name? Yeah, he was impressive. Here's that yep. uh, Sturgeon Bay touchdown late in the second quarter. Cordell Anderson beating everyone to the pile on there. That pulled them within 10, but then uh, 
a big goal line stand there late in the third 98 quarter. 98 yard drive. Wrightstown seals it on that long drive, eventually going on to win it 29 to 12. So you're talking about possible matchups. Westy Pier leads 27 to nothing right now. And um, Kakana still leads in their ball game 26 to 14. So there is a chance of Westy Pier and Kakana, two of the best teams in that division, facing off next week. And I, d I haven't seen a Fond du Lac score tonight. I have but not. If, no. uh, if the Cardinals won, they would play De Pere next week, too. Nice so matchup. That's an interesting all-local matchup there. So Absolutely. It should be a, a fun week. Notre Dame rolled over Ashwaubenon tonight. Luxembourg Casco over Little Shoot. De Pere, as we mentioned, getting the win right there. Southern Dora, big win. So moving on to week number two. And we'll have all the highlights for you on Friday Night Blitz tonight over on NBC 26. So about 10.20, you can flip over there. We'll have you covered. Scores, highlights, and, of course, NBC26.com. We'll have all the scores and the brackets for you to take a look, see how your team did, see who they're playing, the whole thing. So we hope to see you over there tonight for Friday Night Blitz. John Thanks Miller, to the crew everybody. and all the guys. Absolutely. Nice job tonight. And ladies, Great. nice job tonight. Great job by everyone. And it uh, was fun stepping in for Ted. Good working with you tonight, John. Fond du Lac a winner tonight, 49 to nothing. There you go. There so you go. Fond du Lac to Pier next week could be interesting. Again, 29 to 12, the final tonight for our entire crew. For John Mino, I'm Brandon Kinnard saying so long. Thanks for watching TV32 Sports Showdown. See ya. Bell and Hell. Simon's Specialty Cheeks, Dandridge on West Mason, Gallagher's Pizza, North Star Dental, Witt Family Ford, Cobason Buses, Vakes Fox Valley Coin and Diamonds, and Security Loop Key Roofing.